A new law was passed in Parliament on Tuesday, April 2, that will allow authorities to target three groups of people who misuse local SIM cards to facilitate scams. The three categories listed in the Law Enforcement and Other Matters Bill are irresponsible subscribers. Middlemen who procure or provide SIM cards to scammers and errant retailers who use stolen or false credentials to register SIM cards, which are sold to scammers. Police have faced difficulties in prosecuting the first two groups because they needed to prove knowledge or criminal intent. But the new law means a person could be liable in certain scenarios without the prosecution having to prove so, said Second Minister for Home Affairs Josephine Teo. But the intent is not to penalise those who give away SIM cards for legitimate purposes. She said, citing the example of people who register SIM cards in their names for family members' use. Most retailers also do not need to be concerned, said Mrs. Teo, who is also Minister for Communications and Information. Irresponsible subscribers or registrants are people who give away their SIM cards or let other people use their particulars to sign up for SIM cards. Often, they do so to earn a quick buck, said Mrs. Teo. Current laws require the police to prove that the irresponsible subscribers knowingly gave away their SIM cards for unlawful purposes. With the new law, a person will be liable if they give away a SIM card registered with their particulars or allow their particulars to be used to sign up for one. Despite knowing or having reasonable grounds to believe that the SIM card would be used for unlawful purposes. Subscribers will also be liable if they give away a SIM card for any gain. Do not take reasonable steps to find out the identity and location of the recipient or do not take reasonable steps to find out why the recipient wanted a local SIM card. Offenders can be fined up to 10 Singapore dollars. 0007390 US dollars, jailed for up to three years or both. The second group targeted by the new law is middlemen who receive or possess local SIM cards with the intent to use or supply them for unlawful purposes. Those who supply SIM cards knowing or having reasonable grounds to believe that they would be used for unlawful purposes will also be liable for offences. Prosecutors will not have to prove knowledge or criminal intent if the local SIM cards were used for crime, or if 11 or more local SIM cards were found in the possession of the middleman. They also do not need to prove criminal intent for people who buy, sell or rent a local SIM card registered with another person's particulars. The third group is errand retailers. Mobile service providers are required to implement measures to prevent fraudulent registration of SIM cards. These measures include verifying the identity of subscribers by checking their original IDs and scanning IDs instead of manually keying in the subscribers' particulars. A number of retailers have used stolen or false credentials to register SIM cards, which they then sell to scammers. A study of about 1,400 local SIM cards used in scams in the second half of last year found that 65% of such SIM cards were sold by nine retailers. Such errand retailers should be held accountable. Not only do they tarnish the reputation of their peers, their actions cause many victims to suffer losses, said Mrs. Teo. Offenders who receive Supply and possess local SIM cards or facilitate fraudulent registration of local SIM cards can be fined up to 10,000 Singapore dollars, jailed for up to three years, or both, for a first offence. For second or subsequent offences, the penalty may be a fine of up to 20,000 Singapore dollars, imprisonment of up to five years, or both. Corporations and unincorporated associations, such as partnerships and societies, can be fined up to twice the maximum amount for individuals.
Member of Parliament MP Desmond Chiu P. P. Tampanese asked whether the Ministry of Home Affairs was working with online platforms, such as Telegram, where local SIM cards are bought and sold. In response, Mrs. Teo said the police have been working with such platforms to take down accounts involved in scams and other crimes. However, it is currently not a crime to buy or sell second-hand SIM cards. So there are no legal grounds to request such platforms to take down accounts involved in the sales of SIM cards. Once the new offences come into force and the second-hand sale of local SIM cards becomes illegal, we will consider issuing directions under the Online Criminal Harms Act to the platforms to require them to restrict access to accounts involved, she said. MP Yip Hon Won P. P. I. O. Chu Kong raised concerns about a possible scenario where an elderly person's particulars are misused by family members or caregivers. Mrs. Teo said the elderly person would not be liable for an offence if the police find that he or she has no reasonable grounds to believe that their particulars would be used to register for SIM cards. The police recognise that there are indeed situations where elderly might have been tricked into sharing their particulars, she said. The police will investigate such cases comprehensively and consider any credible evidence that the elderly person was unaware about how his particulars would be used. The minister also spoke about how Yellow Ribbon Singapore's symbols, which are registered trademarks, used to galvanise society to support the reintegration of ex-offenders, have been misused by individuals selling merchandise or going door-to-door asking for donations under the guise of supporting ex-offenders. Under the new law, the Singapore Corporation of Rehabilitative Enterprises Act will be amended to give Yellow Ribbon Singapore the exclusive rights to use its symbols. Those who misuse the symbols can be fined up to $10,000, jailed for up to six months, or both. In the case of a continuing offence, the offender could be fined up to 250 Singapore dollars for every day or part of a day during which the offence continues after conviction.